Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. Today I'm going to be continuing on with the series where I highlight uh, Book Riot Live author. The author I'm going to be talking about today is Maria Devana Headley. This is another author that I didn't really know too much about until it was announced that she was coming to Book Riot Live and so we decided to look into her a little bit. She definitely has one of the most interesting bios that I've ever seen before. I'm just gonna read this to you guys really quickly before we get started with like her actual writing. It says, she grew up in rural Idaho on a sled dog ranch, spent part of her 20s as a pirate negotiator and ship marketer in the maritime industry, and now lives in Brooklyn in an apartment shared with her seven foot long stuffed crocodile. So, already intrigued. <laughs> she has written a bunch of different novels as well as like short stories and novellas and all of them sort of have this fantasy or fantastical twist to them which is something that I really enjoy. Her probably best known or best selling book that's out there is her young adult fantasy story Magonia. In Magonia you are following this young girl named Aza Ray. She's about 15 years old and her entire life she suffered from this mysterious lung disease that makes it really difficult for her to do anything, breathe, talk, move, and it's slowly getting worse as she's getting older. So one day she's in class and she looks out the window and she sees what to her seems to be a ship in the sky and she believes that she hears that ship is calling her name and then she sort of just like passes out in class and everyone just thinks that this is just like a side effect from the medication that she's taking. The only person that believes her is her best friend Jason. They've been best friends since they were little kids. Since Aza Ray has always been sick she never really had a whole lot of friends but Jason was always really intrigued by her because he, she seems so interesting to him. So yeah, they've been friends for a really long time and it looks like they both probably have feelings for each other as well, but before anything can happen with that, Aza Ray gets really sick. So when you're reading the first part of this book, it feels like it's all very grounded in reality. It feels like a contemporary fiction book, but then it sort of takes this twist once Aza Ray passes away. This isn't a spoiler, it says this in the cover. And it turns out that Aza Ray is sort of taken to another world called Magonia. In this world, Aza Ray isn't sick and she isn't weak. She's actually extremely strong and healthy. She can breathe just fine. But she also realizes or she finds out that Magonia and Earth are just on the cusp of this immense war breaking out. She has a major part to play in all of this and she has to sort of decide where her loyalties lie with, you know, like her loved ones back on Earth or with this world in Magonia. This book is kind of unlike anything else I've seen before or read before. The writing in here feels very, I don't want to say surreal, but it does feel very dreamlike, especially because there are sort of these fantastical elements wrapped up in the real world. It feels very dreamlike because there is this aspect of reality that grounds this book pretty well, but then you see that there's all this other stuff help happening and it feels unreal and it feels dreamlike and things like that and the writing is very like stream of consciousness style so that also adds to that effect and that style so there is already a sequel to Magonia it's called Airy it came out this month I haven't read it yet but there are consequences for the things that happen in the first book as you would expect another book that she wrote is called Queen of Kings which is this alternate history fantasy historical fiction sort of book. This one has to do with Cleopatra and Mark Anthony and Alexandria in 30 BC. In this story Cleopatra finds out that Mark Anthony has died by his own hand and Cleopatra sort of turns to the gods for help. She ends up basically making a bargain with one of the gods. In this one Maria Headley is sort of doing this fantastical reimagining of the death of Cleopatra which is really interesting. You could tell that she did a lot of research into the actual historical aspects of the story in order to make it again more grounded and more real. She also intertwines vampire myths into the story, but it's a really sort of like fun take on if like Cleopatra was set in a vampire world, which sounds pretty cool to me. Maria Headley also co-authored a fantasy anthology along with Neil Gaiman, which is pretty awesome. The anthology is called Unnatural Creatures and it was actually published to benefit A26DC. A26 is a literacy organization that has hubs set up in a lot of different major cities and they work with the schools within these cities to provide literacy programs to kids in elementary school up and through high school. It's a really great organization. So yeah, Unnatural Creatures features 16 different stories. So if you're someone who likes 
fantasy stories in general and would like to sample a bunch of different authors as well as Maria Headley, then this is a really great collection to pick up, especially since it's supporting a really great nonprofit. So yeah, that is just a really brief overview of Maria Headley's work. She is a very unique writer. When I was reading Magodia, the writing style sort of took me by surprise almost. It wasn't what I was expecting and it again feels very dreamlike, very different from things that I normally read. So keep that in mind when you are picking it up. If you like Neil Gaiman, I think that you'll like Maria Headley more like The Ocean at the End of the Lane than American Gods. So if you like that book, then I think that you would like Maria Headley. So yeah, if you've read any books by Maria Headley, definitely leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys thought of them. Or if you have any other recommendations of other things that she's written, I know that there are a bunch of short stories and novellas out there that she has written that she has published in various anthologies and magazines and whatnot. So definitely leave your recommendations down below if you have any. Also, as always, there is information down below to Book Riot Live. There's a link if you want to register. It's happening in New York City, November 12th and 13th. It's coming up very soon, so hopefully we will be seeing some of you guys there. So yeah, that's all I have for this week, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!